Hey, this is Professor Bergstrom, and in this lab exercise, you're going to actually take one of these, turn it into something that looks like this, flip it over, and then make it look like this. And uh, we do this in two machine tools, and we do this as an initial exercise, so we're expecting it to be maybe the first time that you've ever seen a machine tool before. So we've done a lot of the, the tricky steps for you, and we want to step you through basically the basics of being an operator of a CNC machine tool. Um, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes to go through the whole thing. We're going to have a couple of you going through at the same time and uh, there will always be a PLA with you who if you can answer your questions if you have questions or if you get stuck with something. When it's your turn to do the lab, somebody will bring you over to the machine tool. You're going to want to scan the QR code and go through the check-in process. So just select check-in you're going to select ME1800 and Y block operation one for the lab exercise you're doing. And then uh, you're going to indicate that it's a non standard operation. And you're going to stop filling out the form at this point and, uh, and fill out the rest as you're going along. First, we're going to clean off any chips that might be on top of the parallels or on the clamping surfaces. Then you're going to put your stock material in the vise on top of the parallels and slid up against the part stop. Once you've got the part in there, you want to press down firmly and then just make it snug with the vise handle. Put the vise handle away and grab the torque wrench is, which is provided for you. And, uh, and we're going to torque this down. We're using 40 foot pounds of torque here, which gives us about 3,000 pounds of clamping force. Once you've got the part in the machine, you're going to run the simulation on the computer. Now, um, instead of having you use this CAM software and run the simulation for this particular exercise, um, and for most of the labs in ME1800, we're going to have you watch a video of the simulation. And, uh, and it shows that this 3 8 inch end mill comes down next to the part, does a contour around it, and then roughs out some material in the middle, and then a half inch ball end mill comes in and makes this surface, this V shape on the surface. <clears throat> then a, uh, a chamfer mill comes out, puts a chamfer on it, and then we drill and tap two holes in that surface. Now simulating on the computer tells us what the computer thinks the program is going to do. Simulating on the controller tells us what the machine tool thinks the program is going to do. To simulate on the controller, go to Memory, Graphics, and then press Cycle Start. You'll watch the simulation happen on the screen. It should look like the simulation we saw from the computer. Once you've simulated on the controller, we're going to go back to Memory again, hit Current Commands. Then we're going to reduce the rapid rate on the machine tool. At this point, we're going to have you ask the PLA to check your setup because you're almost ready to press cycle start and run the program. Fill out the rest of the form and don't forget to click submit. Also, ask the PLA how to do check distance to go, especially if you haven't done this before, before you press cycle start and run the program. Once you're ready to go, you'll close the door, press memory current commands press position to make sure that you're in the distance to go view and then uh, cycle start will start the program the spindle's going to go up it'll go over and change to the first tool which is uh, as a 3 8 or a half inch end mill uh, it's going to come over it's going to come down sort of next to the part when we're checking the distance to go we're going to uh, press feed hold we're going to look at the line of code. We're going to look at the distance that it says it's going to go. And we're going to look inside to make sure that that makes sense. And if everything makes sense, we'll press cycle start and it will continue the program. When we're looking at that line of code in the machine tool, it'll be the line of code that's highlighted in the controller. And it'll say something like Z followed by a number. Usually that number will be something like 0.1. And so what that means is that the tool's going to the position Z equals 0.1, and that's measured from the work coordinate system, which for this program is set on the top of the stock material. 
So if you if you see this going to Z.1, it's going one inch to get there, and it's about at 1.1 inches above the part, then it's okay to go. And we want to check the distance to go for each tool as it approaches the workpiece for the first time. And so again, as it's coming down, we stop here, I'm reducing the rapid rate to uh, 0.5, 5%, getting a little bit closer so I can see better. And then looking inside, it says that it's 0 0.006 inches away, and the line there it said I think uh, 0.5 inches, so it was close, looked good, I let it go again. Uh, this tool is uh, making the surface, the V part, of the of the Y block is going back and forth across the part here. And that's that's really all there is to it. You want to keep your thumb close to that feed hold button during normal operations this first time through the part, just in case there's something that you're not sure of, you can always press that feed hold and stop the program. Now if you think the machine is crashing or if you think something's wrong, be sure to, uh, to press the emergency stop instead of the, uh, the feed hold button. If you press it and you didn't need to, we can always come back to it. This is the, uh, the chamfer end mill coming out. And again, as it comes down, we're going to press feed hold. Look at the line of code. Look at the distance that it says it's going to go. And then look inside and make sure that that makes sense. It does, so we let it go. Puts a chamfer on the part and then it spot drills for the two drilled and tapped holes. The next tool out is going to be the, uh, the drill for the tapped hole. And again, as this drill comes down, we're going to press feed hold. Take a look at the line of code that it says it's going to, the distance, look inside, make sure everything looks good. Press cycle start. And so this check distance to go step is probably the most important step of all of the steps in the safety checklist. And, and what it does is it allows you to catch any mistakes that you may have made with the previous steps. The final tool in this program is the uh, 1024 tap, and that's gonna come down. We're gonna press feed hold, check that distance to go. It looks okay, we press cycle start, and that's gonna go in and tap the two holes. And then this part of the operation is done. Before we take the part out of the machine tool, we're gonna to wanna to take that brush, we're gonna brush the chips off again, and then uh, use the vise handle to loosen the vise, take the part out, and do a little visual inspection to make sure that it looks correct. If you're unsure if it looks okay, go ahead and uh, ask the PLA to take a look. Uh, but with that, you're done with the first operation of making the Y block. From here, you're going to proceed to the, uh, the VM2, which is directly behind you as you're operating this super mini mill. And um, you'll be able to set up over there and make the other half of the part. One last thing there is as I walk away from the machine, I hit the emergency stop, and that's just to make sure that if somebody bumps into one of the buttons, it doesn't start operating all by itself. Over here at the VM2, we're gonna check in again with the QR code. Uh, I've sped up the video here a little bit so you can watch my old man eyes clicking the buttons here. Uh, we we'll go ahead and put your name in, select that it's ME1800 and Y block operation two. And again, it's a non-standard operation because you're not setting the tool and the work offsets. Those have already been set for you. Next, we're going to put the stock material in the vise. We go ahead and put it in with the side that we just machined down. Again, make sure that you put it on top of the parallels and pressed up against the part stop. Then you're going to snug it with the vise handle. Once it's snug with the vise handle, you'll go ahead and take that torque wrench and, uh, and torque it again with 40 pounds of uh, torque, which gives us 3,000 pounds or thereabouts of clamping force.
Once the uh, once the part is secured in the fixture, we're gonna run the simulation on the cam software again. And and again for the uh, sake of speeding up the lab exercise, we're gonna have you just watch the video of the simulation. Uh, once you've finished watching the video of the simulation, you'll be able to simulate on the machine tool controller. And uh, there's a slight difference between the uh, machine tool controller for the uh, Super Mini Mill and for the VM2. So the process of getting to the simulation screen is going to be just a little bit different when we get there. As soon as this finishes here, that uh, giant ball end mill will, uh, bullnose end mill will come down and make that surface. The chamfer mill puts a chamfer of spot drills, and then we drill and tap the bottom of the Y block. And so over here, we're going to uh, to go to the memory mode and press the setting graphics button twice to get to the simulation mode. And then we'll watch the simulation on the machine tool controller. And it should look just like it did on the uh, computer and again simulating on the computer tells us what the computer thinks the program does simulating on the machine tool controller tells us what the machine tool thinks the program does if they don't look the same there's something wrong and uh, and ask for help once we do that we're going to uh, go to the memory mode current commands we're going to bring up the distance to go screen here on the vm2 once we're ready to do that, we are ready to run the program, but first get the PLA to, uh, to check that you've done everything correct. Make sure you finish filling out the check-in form and click Submit. Make sure you're at 25% rapid. Cycle start. Tool change to the bulldoze end mill. We'll come down next to the part. As it's coming down, go ahead and press feed hold. Look at the line that it says it's going to. And look at the distance to go that it says it's going to go. Look inside to make sure it makes sense. Now with this part, because we want to control the height of the finished part, the, the zero point is actually the bottom of the, uh, of the work piece. So it's the top of the parallels. When, uh, with our last program, the zero was on the top of the workpiece. Now it's on the bottom of the workpiece. In this way, we make sure that we get the, uh, the part to be exactly the right height when it comes out of the program. The uh, machine faces off the top, and then it goes spiraling down around the part to make the Y shape or the, the stem at the bottom of the Y for the Y block. You'll notice that as it gets closer and closer to the fixture, instead of having my hand on the feed hold button or near the feed hold button, I'll actually put my hand over the emergency stop. And that's because I know that it gets close to the jaws on the uh, on the vise, and I really don't want to cut the jaws on the vise here. This tool's cutting aluminum, and uh, and so if you just see chips flying off, you know you've done it correct. If you see sparks, that means that it has encountered steel, and uh, since we don't intend to cut steel here, you're going to want to hit that emergency stop, and also the sound will change. Um, so I was ready to stop it this first time through, just in case there was a small error in setting that, uh, that Z offset, or if we had put the stock material too far down in the vise, um, it could be a problem. So here I'm going to lift my hand up in just a second, put it on the emergency stop switch, just to make sure that I haven't done something stupid while I set up the machine here. Now, the setup isn't your responsibility in this case because this is an initial lab, but it is important for the operator to pay attention, especially if they're not familiar. So I'm getting ready to pause it if it gets too close, and then I put my hand up on the e-stop, and I realize it's getting so close that I can't really tell. And so as it gets closer to the, uh, the vice jaws here, I'm prepared to stop it at any moment. 
and then it finishes without any problems and then we just do check distance to go for the next three tools that come in. That tool worked out. I'm ready to pause for my check distance to go. We change to the chamfer mill. Chamfer mill is coming down. As it's approaching the workpiece, I press feed hold. I look at the line of code. I look at the distance to go. Look inside, it's good, so we're ready to go. And again, this checking distance to go is the most important step that we're going to do in our, in our operator checklist because it's the one that allows us to catch any mistakes that we may have made in the other steps. Changing to the drill now. The drill comes down. We hit feed hold. Check the distance to go. And it looks good, so we'll run. And now for the final tool change. It brings out the tap. We feed hold. Look at the distance to go. Check inside the machine, everything looks good. Cycle start. And it does this tapping operation. And now the program is done. Again, just like with the other machine tool, we want to clean off the part with the brush and then pull it out of the machine tool and do a visual inspection. And use the vise handle to open the vise, pull the part out, and you don't need to open it very far, just far enough so that it's loose and you can pull your part out. That's less work for the next person. Everything looks good. You're going to put that back in your box and uh, go back to the computer classroom to continue working on the lab.